Welcome to the channel, everybody. It's Captain CA here, and today on Flats Class YouTube, we're going to talk about topwater fishing. Now, this came from my fishing school, flatsclassuniversity.com. If you haven't checked that out yet, you should. But this came up in the chat, and it's what braid to choose for topwater fishing. So I thought, why not answer it here on Flats Class YouTube and give all of you a little, well, inside peek of what we discuss at Flats Class University. So let's come down to my shop right now. We'll leave the barn here, and we're going to answer this question. Okay, top water fishing. Now, the first thing I want to clue you in on is there's just not one rod, just like there's not one lure that you throw when you are top water fishing. Um, it depends on the situation. Uh, I picked up this rod. Um, this is, and I'll try to do this without doing any damage to my equipment. This rod I've got. 30 pound braid on. This is 30 pound diamond white. Um, and you can see that right here. And this is in the all purpose series for Fitzgerald. This is their seven foot three. This is a, and I'll put it right here where you can see it. Okay. It's a seven three medium. Do I use a medium action rod every time I throw top water? No, I do not. In in fact, I would say most cases, once I get down to a choice where I'm using a medium rod, many times I'm using a spinning rod at that point because I like to use my spinning gear for lures that weigh less than a half an ounce. Now this one's right on the border. This little Papa mullet from, from Mirror Lure. This is a half ounce. It's a three, if I remember right, three and five eighths long plug. It weighs a half an ounce. And I use this plug with this 7.3 medium instead of 7.3 medium heavy because it's right on that border line. Um, and it fits perfectly for me. 7.3 is a nice, easy swinging rod. I can make long casts with it and I can use this bait as a walking bait. But generally when I pick the Papa mullet, I'm using it more as a bait to draw fish from cover. And you're like, well, what is he exactly talking about? Well, lots of times I'll line up parallel to a mangrove shoreline and I'll make a cast right down the shoreline and I'll walk it, walk it, walk it, and then pop, 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 and make a bunch of noise and let it spray a little bit. And if there's anything underneath that mangrove shoreline, right underneath the limbs, they'll not only hear the plug because of the frequency of the plug, but it, it's very erratic the way it walks, very splashy, and then I'll spit it a couple of times real hard, and then I'll let it sit two, three, four seconds, and then I'll start it up again. That usually will get the attention of a redfish, a snook, um, sometimes even a little gag grouper or whatever will run out, and they'll smack this thing. But then I've got a rod that's decent power, I can set the hook on, and I can maneuver out away from the mangrove, um, shoreline and and catch them on top water it's a lot of fun it's a good way to draw them off power now in many cases I'll also fish these kelp beds for trout that are in my area that grow on rock and when I see them out there uh, in that zone where you see the laid over kelp lots of times I'll throw this top water this papa mullet up close to the kelp beds or alongside them and I'll do the same type of motion where I'll walk it a little bit, stop it, spray the face a little bit with that pulse, 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 just spitting. And it will draw trout out of those kelp where that kelp's laid over and they're sitting underneath there. It'll get their attention and they'll ease out and they'll follow it. And then when it stops and I go to start it again, poof, they'll hit it again. So. Here's the formula that I like to use with line and leader and tackle all together so you can have an idea how to make the Papa Mullet 
more effective for you, especially when you're trying to draw game fish from cover where a walking bait's got to constantly keep moving. This one here allows you to tease them out just a little bit, but let's go over everything so that you know what we're using here. First, let's talk about the braid. For me, when I'm using casting gear, and I'll set this out here, this is a zillion SVTW. And I've got 30 pound diamond on it, like you saw on the handle there. I, la I label everything so I can stay in tune with what works best with what setups. I find on most of my casting setups, regardless of weight and action, 30 pound diamond braid right here does a good job because it's the equivalent, if you will, of 12 pound fluorocarbon or, or monofilament. Now, this is an eight carrier braid as it's denoted on the box. And it also has a smooth coating on each fiber. So it's not only one of the softest, smoothest braids that you can swing, but it's also UV resistant, so it resists the fading, keeps its integrity for a very, very long time. And, you know, quite honestly, I think it will outlast and outfish the competition in many cases. But all that being said, um, most of you ask, so why would I throw white? Well, I can tell you, especially with topwater, I use these short leaders, okay? On a lot of my topwater fishing, my leaders are no longer than 18 inches long. That's it. From the, from the loop knot that connects the plug to the modified Albright that connects my, my monofilament leader to the actual braid. And I've got a nice balanced knot because the 30 pound and the 30 pound mono are pretty much the same diameter or close to. So it works out really nice. Goes through the guides nice and easy. Not that I have that much to go in the guide to start with. It's just the tip top. But the white braid, if, if you were looking up as a fish toward the sky and you've got the low light or the classic gray overs cast skies that we're all you know wanting to throw top water under, you look up. That fish doesn't see that white braid that often. It's hard for him to pick that up. It's not like dark green or a darker blue or any of those colors that throw a shadow. For me, when I'm throwing braid, I love to throw white or maybe gray, but white is a good color. The other thing I like about white is when I'm working a bait, I can see the line going into the water so I know when I'm getting a hit or I know if I'm in the right rhythm working a topwater plug. When that line is green, it's a lot tougher for me to pick up. Now, I'm not saying green's not a good color. It's a good color in a lot of situations. But for me personally, I do like throwing this white braid from Diamond. It does a fantastic job. Again, I told you, we have the 30 pound leader with the loop knot. This is just a simple canoe man knot. Um, the plug itself, we kind of went over that. It's three and five eighths inches long. It weighs a half an ounce. And when you throw it on this seven foot three rod, I get very good casting distance with it. And this rod has a, even though it's a medium rod, it's kind of a moderate to moderate fast. It's a moderate fast action is what it is. So I can still get the quick hook set, yet it won't pull the hook. So it does a really good job. Now I haven't modified the hooks on this particular topwater, but that's something else for another time on uh, Flats Class YouTube here where we talk about doing some hook modifications. Hey, hopefully you all enjoyed this little tip on topwater fishing with the mirror lure papa mullet and you learned a little bit about diamond fishing braid because hey it takes a whole system to have a successful day on the water if you like what you're learning here at flats class youtube give us that thumbs up like us and tell your friends share and comment in the in in the places that you can below here because we want to be your inshore fishing authority and if you haven't checked out flats class university yet you need to go over to flatsclassuniversity.com. Check us out there. It's my job to make you a better angler. Until next time, keep these rods bent.